Austin, Texas and South by Southwest 2022. My name is Paul O'Brien with Media Tech Ventures. I'm really excited to start this conversation with this esteemed group of folks at the table here. We're at Midwest House in Austin, Texas on purpose. Part of the purpose is that I actually grew up in excited to see a bunch of my friends back from Michigan and Chicago and Detroit. I'm Austin based now though and when I moved here about 12 years ago from California, I got really fixated on the idea that there was a lot more going on in the center quarter of the country, all the way up from, from up north in Michigan and Wisconsin and Minnesota, all the way down here into Texas. And I think we're really starting to see that and realize that truly. So with me, I've got Kelly, I've got Naveen, I've got Christy, I've got Elisa, and I've got Samantha, a group of VCs from Texas and a group of VCs from the Midwest. And we're gonna start to explore that idea as we get to know better what's going on in this part of the world and why everybody's so excited about it. How are y'all? Doing great. Doing okay. great. Awesome. So excited yeah, to be complain. here. Good. Very excited to be back at South by Southwest. Right? Yes. I am I am in my elements more than you could possibly imagine. It has been been depressing sitting at home for two years. So it is wonderful to see you all. I want, I want to start with that side of the table if we can. Texas, right? Everybody's here. Why is, every, why is everybody here besides South by Southwest? What's drawing all this attention to what's going on in this part of the world? And then to open it up to the rest of the table, what do we think about the Midwest? What has our attention up north of here? Well, everything's bigger in Texas, including now, you know, round sizes, exits. Um, not, not quite, but we'll get there. So yeah, I think Texas, Texas is a great place to build a business. I moved here after high school, so I've been here since undergrad, but not born and raised in Texas. And I think the piece, like one of the key things I think about building business or building a venture fund in Texas is that you get to be part of building the community. And so because the community is still, still in its growth phase, you get to jump in and really make impact on the community like immediately. And so really creating your own communities out of it and understanding like where you want to go with that, where you want to go with your communities, where you want to go with your company is easy to do here because people are really open and receptive to new business ideas. And so it's a, it's a pretty open economy in that way. And I think that that's a really conducive to VC and innovation. Oh, by the way, I'm Samantha from Mercury Fund. <laughs> Uh, I'm Elisa. I'm from Math Ventures. We are actually based out of Chicago, but I live here in Austin, Texas with one of our partners. Um, I moved here from New York. I'm a Northeasterner, uh, also Cuban, Puerto Rican, first generation American, uh, 11 years ago. And one of the things that I love about Texas is exactly what you were saying, Samantha. It is so open. It's so easy to meet people. Something about that southern welcoming nature makes it really easy to be successful here. I also think we have incredible universities, we have thriving arts, there's music, there's all kinds of exciting things happening here in Texas in the arts community that contribute to the creativity that we have as uh, working with entrepreneurs. Yeah, I would second all of that. Um, I think to Sam's point, it's unpaved territory. Right? You know, in terms of tech and innovation, that you can really make your mark on the world from Texas. Uh, you know, I also, it's cheap, relatively, uh, inexpensive. Come to know? Houston, it's way cheaper. <laughs> yeah. And it's a nice place to live. Uh, you know, I grew up here, I love Texas, so I'm biased, but I, you know, I think people are moving. I, I, I love the sentiment that it's a friendly community because outside the Midwest house here at South by Southwest is a big sign that says nice as heck, which of course is very Midwest. It's very Michigan. I love, I love seeing that sign. The meeting, Kelly, welcome down. Tell us a little bit about, about what you're working on up north and what brings you down, what gets you excited to be here. Thank you very much. First of all, first time at South by Southwest. Welcome. I, oh, welcome. Yes, yes, I've been to Texas many times. I love Texas. I love the people. But to come here with this level of energy, I'll tell you right now, people were trying to describe it, and people who know me say, Naveen, you're going to love this. But now I get it. So backyards, beer, barbecue, business, and beats. Nice. All give me there's energy. There's a book in there. And there's a book in there. Trademark. All gives me energy, and so I'm really happy to be here, and I will continue to come here. But talking about uh, a little background on myself, I am a co-founder and CEO of Loud Capital. We started a, a fund initially in 2015, and now we do 
a lot of impact investing, industry agnostic, multiple different funds to help the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Basically what you were saying with regards to Texas on community and essentially the advantage of not being on the coast is building an ecosystem of what makes sense. Mm -hmm. it's, it's coming into an industry, fresh, moldable, put a piece of clay, how does this make sense? And so that's what we do in the Midwest. I would think with the craziness of the pandemic the last couple of years, it's now, you know, people have looked to us, right? From Texas to the Midwest to the South, you no longer have to say, hey, you should come join us. Now it's like, hey, when you land here, let me know if you need some direction on where to live and where to work, right? So happy to be here, happy to discuss a lot of things. I feel like everyone has said everything already, um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll try to add a little extra to it. My name is Kelly Jones. I'm general partner at 68 Capital. We are a fund that invests directly into black, Latinx women and LGBTQ founders, um, both in the Midwest and the South, seed stage fund. Um, I'm based in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, this is my ninth time at South by Southwest, I believe. Yes. Oh, um, but this wow. is the first time I've been here actually speaking as opposed to working. Um, I ran an experiential marketing company where a lot of my Aren't clients- both working? Both is Well, no, working. both are working, but this is different. <laughs> like, this is actually fun working. Like, I get to meet people, talk to people, colleagues, that sort of thing. But what kind of led me into technology is that I ran an experiential marketing company. I used to do a lot of activations here at South by Southwest with really big brands now, but at the time they were really small. So that's kind of how I got my start. But I can't, I think I have to echo everything that everyone has said, right? When it's unmarked territory, it's really easy to start and grow and build a community. For me, you know, we had a little bit of an ecosystem because we had some significant exits in Indianapolis with Angie's List and Exact Target and Interactive Intelligence, which were huge. Um, but there wasn't a lot of focus on the importance of investing in black founders or Latinx founders. And so that was what I got to bring back to Indianapolis when I moved back in 2017. Um, I spent most of my career on the coast. I was in New York for about eight years. I was in LA, I worked in media, all sorts of stuff. Um, but to be able to come back, take all of that knowledge and be able to focus it on impacting black founders has been sort of my life's work. And so I'm excited to, to be in a space to be able to do that. But I think the most important thing about that work is that in comparison to Texas or Ohio or anywhere else, you get to kind of create what you need for the people that are there. And I, I think that's the opportunity we really get to have. And there's an opportunity um, for all of us to collaborate and work together and find ways to do it even more. I, I, I love the way the conversation kind of shifted to, to the fact that not only is it a community and it's nice and it's friendly, it's easy to get connected here, but 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 <laughs> there's that there's meaning that we're looking for in, in doing things more impactfully here. Some, some, obvious, some obvious industries, I think, between, between the north and the south in the center here are, are in transportation, obviously. Retail and commerce, e-commerce. What, what kind of things do you think I'm missing? What, what really stitches together the corridor as having more meaning, perhaps, than California or New York or, or, or the southeast? Thoughts? Logistics. Logistics, yeah. All right, so in, in the world of, of the new world of hybrid, where you can work from anywhere, but if you do have a location or a, or a physical presentation somewhere, having it in our regions, let's say, is a no-brainer. And, and again, we don't have to sell that anymore. Uh, companies are already doing it. And so they perhaps might have started their headquarters and exec team in this city, but now they're like, okay, we're gonna build a big presence over here. Whatever you wanna call HQ, whatever. But in the end, you need to be where the population is. You need to be closer to people in general. And that's it. Geography, I mean, it just, it just makes sense. Now, you also have these community um, impact funds that are being built uh, from people at this table and many more that just makes sense to the current investor and current corporation. And so when you have a young person I don't know why this is coming to mind, but like buys a box of toothpaste, they now care what that company is about, right? And so my guess and my hope and the conversations that I'm having is that when people invest money, whether you're an institution or an individual, you are now starting to question and care where that money goes. And so I have a feeling already, I just met many of you just now, that you all have a great story of closing that deal more than a lot of other folks who have raised much more capital but cannot go into the explanation, depth, and detail of what that money 
is in alignment of how your corporation and how you think. Yeah, I think that's a great transition into something else that we're thinking about a lot in Texas, which is the energy transition. And I don't want to steal uh, Christy's thunder because she's the expert here. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to her. But um, there are there are a lot of companies, especially coming from Houston, that are really focused on the energy transition. And it's making sure where we get our energy is actually clean. And that is the, the best, most responsible company for our environment and how we do that and how we're transitioning over. And so I think Texas in general is a really, really good place to be thinking about that and building a thesis around that as an investor or as companies um, because it is the next wave of, of energy. So. Yeah. Um, yes. I agree. And I'm Christy. <laughs> Everyone missed that earlier. The, um, you know, it, everything has to change about energy. We have to change it completely, and tech, it clearly needs to start in Texas. We've got like 40% of the state budget direct tax receipts from oil and gas. That's all going to have to change. Um, and I honestly, and you know, a lot of it happens in the Midwest, like big auto. That's a big giant part of. It's not now the the machine companies are energy companies, and the energy companies are machine companies, and it's all blurred because it matters you know, what your impact is to the environment. To your point, and this is, I know, something that Sam's working on quite a bit, and I'm also working on just sustainability more broadly, you know, and it brings us back to this, um, this point of impact and really big industry, you know? It's, software's been eating the world for the last 40 years, and now we need to transmit those innovations in data and software into real assets and how we're living our lives and how we run our cars and you know how we impact with our earth and I think that's really what the heartland has the potential to offer is just you know deep innovation in industry which is kind of everything yeah. you know I was I, gonna take a minute to brag real quick because why not I'm yes sorry. please sorry I didn't mean to move you um so just to lean on that because I think it's really important to talk about this I don't think people, like, I'm from Indiana. I know that sounds weird. I was like, do you even see black people in Indiana? Yes. There's, <laughs> we're, in central Indiana, it's about 30% black. I think people, people don't know that. But the thing I love the most about the South and the Midwest is one, universities per capita. There's universities, like big universities in a huge short amount of span from where you live. Commerce, just companies, right? In Indianapolis alone, when I sit on my balcony, I can see Eli Lilly, Anthem, Farmers Insurance, the Salesforce Tower to part two, and all sorts of things, just in the skyline. Um, and I think, you know, the other part obviously is the fact that, you know, you get the opportunity to live for very cheap um, compared to anywhere else on the coast. So where we're starting to see a lot of impact is we've had success in B2B SaaS and B2B marketing. That's where most of Indiana's success in technology has come from. But what's been gonna be kind of the next wave of boom is one, we have the 5G center in Indianapolis where everything 5G is coming out of it. We have the Battery Innovation Center where they're testing everything from autonomous and all sorts of stuff that's 45 minutes south of IU University. Um, you know, we have ag tech stuff that's happening at like an, a massive, massive, massive rate. And you see that a lot in, in Kentucky too. Mm -hmm. A lot around ag. Um, food and food safety and food insecurity is gonna be something that we're gonna be working on for a long time. So finding ways to grow better food, to, to have better systems is gonna be key. And then manufacturing, right? Like these are all legacy industries like you were just saying that have not been touched by tech and digitization, but these are the things that are gonna push our economy forward. Um, and so I think you have to look at the South and the Midwest and other places as the place where this innovation is really gonna start coming from because the people on the ground are the people that have been doing this work for so long. Um, funny enough though, I don't invest in any, well, I can't invest in some of that, but I, but I don't. I, when I decided to start our fund, part one was obviously around diversity and inclusion. Part two was actually, around the things that I think you guys do much better than us. I mean, Columbus has what, the largest number of like um, sewing houses and stuff like that, like within a, a certain area, like CPG companies, retail. There's no one doing that where I'm from. Um, and that's my only background is retail, <laughs> like we're retail, CPG and consumer. So I now get the opportunity to really focus on founders that are building direct to consumer brands, that are building creator economy tools, that are building future work tools, while also doing some food and, and other stuff like that. But what we now get to do because it's so new is introduce new stuff. 
and that is what's going to really push things forward um, because we also have the industry and the universities to match. Yeah, and I think to like marry all this together, like a lot of this is happening from what you were saying, Kelly, which is the universities have been, we have incredible universities throughout the Midwest and through the South. All of the research that's being done there is contributing to the ecosystem. The original IBM Watson lab team was here in Austin. It started in Austin. I was on the commercialization team for Watson. Um, and I've started to see how this technology over the past five years has really changed legacy industries, like especially in logistics um, manufacturing. So it's really exciting time to be here because you can get in on the ground on, in a lot of these innovations. Yeah, I think there's another important piece just to keep going deeper on this that COVID changed everything, right? So now, not only do we have the industries that need innovation. Not only do we have all these universities that are spitting out talent, we also have a workforce that is super mobile. Going back to what you were saying earlier, we have this workforce that is comfortable living anywhere now, that's comfortable m picking up and moving to Austin to see if they like it for three months, or to Houston, let's go to Houston, but we're working on changing that. <laughs> um, but we have, like we have people now picking up and moving to I don't know, Chicago, Iowa, wherever they want to go. And they're doing that because they're like, hey, why not? Let me go try somewhere that's cheaper, somewhere that has a vibrant up and coming economy, somewhere that has places that like I can actually make the impact, like Chrissy was saying earlier. And so it's how we have all that. And then on top of that, capital has also flown in. And so because capital is coming to the middle of the country, now our valuations and our exit valuations from a VC standpoint and a, and a company standpoint aren't capped like they used to be. And so now we're getting these amazing venture returns being in the middle of the country, but we're not paying as much to do it yep. because it's just cheaper to live here, um, especially in Texas with our taxes and some other things that exist right now. Like there's a lot of benefit for, for being in the middle of the country and not a lot of downside anymore. And so COVID kind of got rid of the downside for us. The talent's yeah. here and the capital's here now. I've always been pretty interested in the notion of whether or not capital follows the opportunity or vice versa. A lot of conversations have to do with how we need capital in order to be innovative. Mm -hmm. But I would almost argue that, that what's been happening in the center of the country is proving otherwise. That no, what we need are entrepreneurs and collaborations and communities and, and the companies involved. And then the capital will come, right? It's, it's coming here for a reason. Is that, is that valid? That, the, the capital is more so, to me, an indication of the fact that we're doing something incredible in the world in this part of the United States because the money is moving here, given that opportunity. Yeah, I think people were like, hey, I can get on Zoom and invest over Zoom now, and so why be geographic constrained? It's actually not smart for your returns to be only invest on the coast if you live in San Francisco whenever you can invest in Houston. <laughs> and um, and get like find just as good entrepreneurs there. I think where we're missing and what I, we still really need to build, so we have the capital and we have the valuations now, what we really need to work on is continuing to build the ecosystem, which I think we're all doing, a, I think we're all trying in each one of our respective cities and regions, um, but you have to have the collisions, you have to have the ecosystem, and so making sure that that's all the next piece I think is the next step of our journey here. Like the beautiful thing about being in Texas, I have been working and building communities for a long time here in the Austin ecosystem. And what I love about Texas cities and starting to get to know Chicago through Math Ventures is that people are incredibly collaborative. Like everything's new here. There are no like, you know, like there's no beef between people. Everyone wants the same thing. We want the pie to be bigger for everyone. So it's been really wonderful getting to know colleagues in different areas of the Midwest and being able to collaborate on deals um, and share share different ideas. I want to compare. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Cool. I just was gonna. Um, I do to your point about capital. I think there are a lot of different kinds of capital. Like I, I immediately think of the universities. Mm -hmm and the R&D money coming from the federal government that's pumping directly yes. through universities. Um, you know, the Biden administration committed 10 billion to emerging hubs. Uh, so all of that is in addition and also attracts the venture money, which we're already seeing. So I just think it's important to think about it a bit more holistically. I don't, yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I don't feel like we're short. It's, it's, it's definitely a little bit more of a flywheel in, in ways that I've explored it in, in some stuff I've written that it is a flywheel. It's, it's, as each piece 
uh, uh, innovates more and connects better and collaborates more, the, the whole wheel just continues to spin more, more, more quickly. Hence the word acceleration, right? Yeah. It's just a matter of keeping up with it. Um, the, I was going to ask a question for the group from I, my Indeed. Age. The, uh, you know, what do you guys think it is that binds the Midwest and Texas, the South, you know, Texas together? I think there's a... Some commonalities that I see, but I'd be interested in your thoughts. I have one word, oh. or maybe I have a few. <laughs> Try it in one first. Underdogs. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. It's, it's that chip on your shoulder yeah. of yeah. we're nice people, we're capable people, we have universities, we have companies, we have entrepreneurs, we have money. Why the heck is it there this ecosystem that everyone's talking about in the East and West? And so I had a discussion earlier today where it's like, there has been a lot of capital invested. There has been a lot of great entrepreneurs, but it takes a while for that boiling pot to just rip off the lid and you start to have an exits. And then you have the, the new wealth that is now investing and you have the college folks that are now saying, I don't need to leave Austin. Why would I not just stay here and join this amazing company? So it takes a while. And I think we're all here now. And now I was gonna flip over to from an investor mindset, from an LP mindset, I'm a corporation, institution, I'm an individual, and I want to invest in venture. I want to invest in good people. I want to make a shitload of money. But. And save I, the world. And, and save the world. I want to do it all. And so I'm going, to, I'm going to compare, and who likes wine here? Who likes to drink wine? Anybody? Everyone. I love wine. And I love Napa. I love California wines. I actually like wines in a lot of different regions. But you know what I do when I go to a restaurant right now? And I like to talk about this because I, this is how I, my analogy to venture in the Midwest and South versus the coast, is I no longer go for that Napa bottle. I love the Napa wines, but you are paying a premium for the real estate there. The environment is high cost. So the quality of wine is just as good as it was five years ago. It's, it's great wine, but I'm gonna pay a lot. Recently, I'm going to Riojas, which is the Tempranillo grape in Spain. And if anyone wants to know that, I'm telling you, go straight to the menu, order a Rioja, and that's gonna cost you probably one-fifth the cost, but it's gonna be fucking delicious. <laughs> and everyone is gonna be like, this is amazing. And you just saved money, but you invested in amazing conversation and wine, just like you wanted, that was the goal. That's what the Midwest and South is for an investor. It's a younger, more moldable ecosystem that is not priced by peers and FOMO. Again, I'm not downplaying quality everywhere, but when you're talking about value, ROI, and investing in probably more community, more touch point based ecosystems, it's a no brainer. It's got opportunity. Absolutely. If we're just talking numbers, it is the best business sense. Well, I, I even really love the word underdog because that's sort of the spirit of the entrepreneur anyway, that, that I'm already at a massive disadvantage because I don't have a business model. I'm inventing something new. I don't have any customers, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna figure this out and we're gonna make, make something better in the world. Coasts, other places in the world that don't necessarily have those underdogs, perhaps don't have as many entrepreneurs. It, perhaps don't foster that culture of of can do and, and will do, and, and that really creative spirit that says we're gonna fix things and do it better. Yeah, I think there's a key piece here too that comes back to diversity, which I think each one of us, like I know each one of us cares about. I've heard you two talk. I know us three have had a lot of conversations about it, but what's really cool is when you're thinking about entrepreneurs, you think about build, right? People who are builders. That's great. What we can do now though, in all these newer ecosystems, not saying we're completely new, but in newer ecosystems, is we can be super intentional about those. And so now we can say, oh hey, it's not just about who you know in some of the more tight, like older, more mature ecosystems. It's all about who you know. And so what did that mean? It meant women were getting less than 2% of EC funding, even worse for black women, right? Even worse for Latinx women. And so it's, okay, how are we rebuilding that in a way in each one of our ecosystems to where we don't already create that exclusivity? Because the exclusivity is actually bad for innovation. It's bad for business. Um, having, having more diverse teams like increases your retention rate for customers and for employees. Like all the data is there, right? It's better to have diverse teams, but certain 
certain coastal cities aren't listening to us and they're still doing it. So then why not make the change here in our cities and start building out ecosystems that look like our cities actually look? Yeah, I would agree with Sam. I think we've got a shot here. You know, we, this is not paved territory. These aren't paved networks. You know, we haven't been doing this for very long. And the same opportunity that Texas and the Midwest have, people of color and women have. It's the same. It's about the teaching entrepreneurship. Like, we definitely have the culture. Like, I know we all have the hearts for it, for a creation and driving new value. I'm not worried about that part. It's about sorting out how to do it. And I think that's what I know that um, I know I'm willing and dedicated to. And I think everyone on this panel is just really strongly committed to creating new entrepreneurs, you know, and investing in new value creation. That's really what we need. And that's what's going to change the world. Not well, creating the resources so people are willing to make the jump too, right? Yes. Or having you as a resource yes. to go to. Building everything we yeah. need. How many of y'all are in town for the rest of South by Southwest and music and film? I'll be here. You're in? You're all in? Wait, how, how long is this thing? <laughs> Months, actually. It's, I know, that's what I've heard. That's a long time. <laughs> well, what, what, what are the, one of the industries that I think can tie us together is, is the music scene, to be honest, because most, most people, when they think of the, the Silicon Valleys, when they think of the startup community, they, they, their minds go right to tech. But, but the fact is, if you go back historically enough, it, it has much more to do with culture. Yep. It's born of the reason San Francisco turned into Silicon Valley was the hippie culture and was, was, the, was, was more Berkeley and that counterculture, that progressive culture. And I think that's why Austin's boomed. And so I'm really personally excited about the Houston music scene, the Austin music scene, the Chicago music scene, the Detroit music scene that has been overshadowed by the coasts for decades as much as the entrepreneur class. If like, we bring that together, we bring the arts back to the, to the ecosystem. And people wouldn't think of these things. Like, I was in Houston a couple of weeks ago. I am a huge EDM fan. I saw one of my favorite DJs at, like, some backyard bar um, in Houston, and it was really, really incredible. We have incredibly, like, thriving music in all of the cities, like, both, you know, Chicago and throughout Texas. This is where I have to make my shameless plug for um, the thesis that I lead at Mercury, which is our Web3 thesis. And the reason that I do that is a lot of the things we're talking about today, like we get in on the ground floor of building an entire new industry and we get to do that and make do it in a way that's like really impactful in the way we want to do it. But a big piece of that is now enabling creator economies. So music, film producers, book um, authors, right? Book publishers. There are now new ways for them to monetize game, gaming, right? There are now new ways for you to monetize creation that you were never able to do before. And there's no reason that in 10 years from now, the coast should own that. Like that could be decentralized. That sounds cheesy, sorry, but it's true. That could be across the country, right? And so like, why not? Like that's a new industry, let's seize it. And that's a perfect opportunity, I think, for us building out part of our thesis in Texas, Midwest, and the South. I spent the bulk of my career in the music industry. Um, and the, the main thing that I realized really early on is that the entire industry is built on technology from the way that we record it, distribute it, market it, and listen to it. Every last one of those is a tech industry or tech company, right? So obviously music has been the one that has pushed forward thinking when it comes to the development of new opportunities. Um, what I've loved about the work that we're doing now, similar to what you just shared, is we put a lot of, we've now put a lot of money into what we consider future work. Future work to me is creator economy and the infrastructure around it. And no one's touching it. Not touching it well. You know, the only things we're seeing are, well, you do see sometimes is platforms to kind of pair influencers or creators with the different things. But think about the hundreds of other things that we can do to help who's now the new version of entrepreneur, right? Like these are new Delaware C Corps that we're looking at, but they're individuals. Yeah. Giving them the opportunity to create wealth in a totally different way. I think the music industry has probably been the most innovative, although the labels haven't been wanting to adopt it until it's late but they, it innovates first. And so that's what I'm the most excited about over the next you know, two or three years that we invest is continuing to in, invest in the infrastructure around the things that people that look like me are doing anyway. 
Um, and being able to really own it and being able to really monetize it in a way where we have economic benefit, not just you know your coastal VCs that you know get to make the trillions of dollars, but now you're seeing people in Chicago and Detroit and Indiana and wherever else, Nashville, start to see those exits and start to bring a lot of um, exits and, and other resources into the community, which means we can continue to building more things. And I think that's gonna be the game changer for us. We get to be in front of that. Um, I will also say, <laughs> that I believe the best music actually comes out of the Midwest and the South, and I have historical data to prove it. Yes. The South owns hip hop, we know that. We do. And the Midwest owns R&B and soul. Yep. 100%. We can name them, name them. All of the Motown, mm -hmm. Michael Jackson, Prince, all Midwest, Ohio players, mm -hmm. the Isley Brothers. Like, and we all here know Texas country is the best. Like you can't world. argue it. So, so really, is music coastal? Maybe they take inspiration though from us, and I think that's important to own. Well, it, it, my experience with the, the music business. I just said that. Yes, I did. You did, and, and it's, it's but true because it's too. right. It, because it's right. Well, it, that, that, that's why it strikes me as having so much potential for for all of us here because. The, the, the arts, the, the media industries, the music industry went to the coast because of market size. Yeah. New York and Los Angeles, there are more people here. It's easier to get traction when it's not decentralized, right? When you've got to play the venue and you've got to sign the label and so forth. That's why everybody would leave here to go to LA. And what's beautiful is coming back. One of the, one of the verticals that we're, we're pretty, pretty excited about is actually the news business because Notionally, the same idea. New York has had a, a you know, a, a, a chokehold on the news business and the news industry for decades, which, which then forces our attention to New York's perspective on things. And so as that becomes decentralized and more people, more journalists, reporters can get, find their own success again, they can do that in Chicago and Detroit and Columbus and St. Louis and Oklahoma City and Dallas and Fort Worth. And, and we're seeing that happen. And Houston. <laughs> What, what, let, let, let's wrap up on this thought. What, what more would you all encourage we do better together, collectively, uh, as, as we're having conversations like this? What are, what are really the next steps for us all to, to connect with you all, to, to, to connect this room together better, to, get, to, to connect the great audience here, to, to how they can get involved and how they can move this forward with us? I think it's finding points in collaboration. You know me, I'm a community person. Like, I think this is the most important thing that we can do is share deals. Um, talk to each other about what's going on in each other's ecosystems. Connect on the things that are important to us, like diversity, like ESG, like um, consumers caring about the brands that they're buying from and being able to find meaningful partnerships that are actually making a difference, supporting organizations like Div Inc. Um, and that are upskilling the people in these communities, especially the minorities in these communities so that they can be a part of this incredible movement. Um, you can find me on Twitter. I am at Miss Elisa S. Um, I talk about VC startups and horses, so. Watson <laughs> is her horse's name. Yes, I know he's this. wonderful. Um, but yeah, you can find me there or out in your community. This has been such an honor to speak with all of these wonderful people today. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, thank you, this is great. It's so nice to meet two new friends. So I think uh, going on what Lisa's saying is there's a piece where we don't have the collisions in the same way if we all lived in San Francisco, we would be having. And so how do we be really intentional about making sure we have those collisions as the funders, but also making sure that our founders are having those collisions too. And I haven't quite figured that out yet. I think a lot of the tools coming out with future work and hybrid and remote teams are gonna help with that. But we have to figure out a way to where these collisions are happening, right? And that they're not happening because, oh God, I have to get on another Zoom. And like, I love talking to you, but I hate getting on Zoom all the time. So it's like, how do I, how do we make sure that we're doing that in a way that's like really fulfilling and fun for every person and not just feeling like another Zoom meeting that we have to do? And I don't know the answer to that, but I think it's a really important piece to make sure that our entire ecosystem is growing together because together we're all stronger, together we're all bigger. And then I think the other key thing we all absolutely need to be intentional about and do is really be um, conscious about who we're hiring and make sure that we are hiring diverse teams because we're gonna perform better if we do so. Data, promise. 
Um, so you're gonna you're gonna perform better, but it's also going to be better for the ecosystem in the long run. And so we have to not just think about ourselves, but we have to think about what we're trying to build and the ecosystems we're trying to build, because that's gonna make the entire it's gonna be it's gonna have a very positive network effect. I think oh, uh, that that's awesome. Thank you. Also, I'm on Twitter S Cho Lewis J O Lewis. I talk about uh, Game of Thrones and venture. <laughs> I was gonna say, everyone here seems to be really collaborative and it seems like we do have clay here and we're molding it as we speak. When I think about venture capital, I think about economic development and so it's not just a funding source and one slice of a whole journey of a vertical of what that means to the community. And so when you think about that, you know, you think about, you think about talent and, 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 and ensuring there's a lot of different people at the table. So I think there's an opportunity for all of us to collaborate on talent as our companies and portfolios are growing to, to get great sources of, of talent. Uh, number two, business development. We also, you know, all have great networks and we're building that by the day. And so we should be sharing in that. It, hey, I have a portfolio company that's interested in looking for this. We should help knock down the doors together. Um, and then number three, I always like to remind ourselves, including myself, about the young folks, whether you're in middle school, high school, or, or growing, we should take advantage of not only talking to them and understanding what they care about, but to include them. And so we're like starting internships this summer with some of our portfolio companies, because to me, that's, that's the real. And there's plenty of education out there, but experience is the gold. So I think there's a lot of opportunity to collaborate. And to me, that's first a mindset, which I think we all have here. Uh, for those who don't have it, I think they're missing out on a lot of opportunity. But great to be here. I'm not as active on Twitter. I'm still trying to figure out how that works. I think you guys are amazing at it. I'm on LinkedIn. I don't know how that goes over here. Naveen Goyle, MD, on LinkedIn. Share about entrepreneurship, investing, leadership, and everything else. You guys said all the good stuff. I don't know if I have anything else to add. I mean, yeah, collaboration, I think, is important. Sharing deal flow is important. I think staying connected after these moments is really important, too. Um, whatever I can do to help, just let me know. Like, it's really that simple for me. I, like, if y'all need anything in the audience, if anyone needs anything up here, more than happy to help. Um, where you can find me, I'm everywhere. <laughs> at Kelly with an I, Nicole with a K. Instagram is my favorite platform. I don't talk about venture on any of them. I mostly share TikToks and funny gifts. So if you're in for a laugh, <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Cause I just don't think I'm smart enough to talk about all that kind of stuff yet. So I just rather entertain you guys. That's what I'm on. <laughs> um, I would agree, you know, second everything. Um, if you have a good idea, get it out there. Yeah. Like open up, it's scary, but your ideas are valid and your dreams can be real. You know, start a company, create something new. Like we need new ideas. We don't want tomorrow to look like yesterday. Um, collaborate with each other and support the underdogs. Like that's what I'm gonna try to do. It's hard, you know, um, but a rising tide lifts all boats. And I really, I, a change breeds opportunity. We just had seismic change, you know, uh, we're just coming out of it. And who knows what's gonna happen now with like World War Three and you know, the world's crazy. So let's take our shot and work together. And uh, like I said, Christy Cardenas, I'm on the various, you can find me, Grit Ventures. Thank you. No, no, no better example of, of, I hope, we're leading by example a little bit as the microphone doesn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> of, of, we're here in Austin, Texas to kick this off at South by Southwest, which in and of itself is highly collaborative. Everybody here is sharing ideas and being creative and talking about technology but we're intentionally spending time with Midwest House, right? To, to, to show that, to prove it. That, that in Austin, Texas, I wanna have a conversation about Chicago and Detroit and Indianapolis and, and, and Ohio, right? That, that there's more potential in our working together than working separately. And I think this is, hopefully this is good evidence of that start. And it is a start. Thank you all very, very much. It's a start because we're gonna produce this as funded house. We're gonna start to take this on the road a little bit. Hopefully get it to your town, your city, we're gonna do a whole series of interviews throughout the center quarter of the country, so thank you for kickstarting this with us. My name is Paul O'Brien from Media Tech Ventures. Everybody in the room had a good time? Woo!
Uh, thank you all. I feel like you need to create NFTs for everyone in this room for being part of like the very first. I like it. Yes, the very, the very first. Sound good? Funded house. All right, let's Who, do it. Who's doing it? <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a good night.